Good morning. Nice to be back here with all of you on this uh, Monday morning. So in my teachings this week, uh, I'd like to explore another quality uh, that is essential on the path um, and also really a tremendous support in our day-to-day -day life. And that's the quality of resolve or determination. So um, I'll share a few reflections uh, briefly, and then we'll do a guided meditation this morning. And tomorrow on Tuesday, I'll give a talk on uh, a fuller exploration of this quality. <clears throat> and we'll have some uh, time for questions and discussion uh, on Wednesday morning. I'm going to start by uh, sharing a couple of stories from the early Buddhist texts. Um, one that's fairly well known of a, a monk named Sona. And Sona apparently had been a musician when he was uh, a lay person before he ordained, uh, played the lute, which is a stringed instrument, and uh, apparently made very beautiful music. And at one point he went to see his teacher, the Buddha, and said, you know, I'd like to go do walking meditation on my own. And the Buddha said to him, not a good idea. <laughs> you're, not, you're not ready to go practice on your, on your own. Why don't you stay here with the other, your brothers and sisters, the other monastics, and continue practicing in community where you have the support of those who have practiced more, who are wiser. And uh, he said, no, no, I really, I, I feel uh, really inspired and determined. I really want to go and do walking on my own. I'm going to you know, realize the goal. <laughs> the Buddha says, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why don't you stay here? So again, Sona asks a third time. And as the tradition goes, if someone asks the, the Buddha three times, the third time he kind of feels obliged to, to say yes. So the third time the Buddha says, if you insist, you know, fine, go ahead. But, you know, no, this is not what I recommend. So Sona goes off to do walking practice with, you know, this really, really um, intense determination to free his mind and realize awakening. And uh, he walks and he walks and he walks doing walking meditation. And he walks uh, so much without taking a break. And so kind of forcefully, he ends up kind of getting blisters and his feet are bleeding and his mind gets sort of tied in knots. He's beset with fear and doubt and um, frustration. And finally, he comes back to the Buddha really defeated. And he says, you know, you were right. Uh, I'm not ready. I just, you know, I, my mind's a mess. I couldn't practice and look at my feet. So, you know, the Buddha says, okay, well, let's see what we can learn from this. And he asks Sona, he says, Sona, you were a musician before you... Uh, left the household life and ordained. He says, yes. He says, now let me tell, let me ask you, Sona, when you played your lute, if the strings were too tight, could you make good music? He says, no. You know, everything would be out of tune. He says, okay. And if the strings were too loose, then what? Yeah, also it wouldn't make the beautiful melody if the strings were too loose. He says, right. He said, the strings needed to be tuned just right. He says, even so, in our practice, our heart, our effort, and our determination need to be tuned just right, not too tight, not too loose. So this is one of the, the teachings in terms of not only how we practice meditation, but also how we live our lives, right? We need determination. We need a quality of sort of firm commitment in the heart to get anything done, whether it's accomplishing something at work, whether it's working through something in a relationship or showing up for ourself uh, in a, a, you know, an aspiration or a resolution that we've made and being able to follow through. But if we're too um, intensely contracted around it, we burn out. And yet if we're not enough fully there, we don't, we don't follow through. 
There's one more image I want to share with you that the Buddha offers specifically about the meditation practice that uh, we can work with in the guided meditation. He's talking about how to relate to the breath. So Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, um, one of the you know, renowned and ancient practices in India predated the, the Buddha. And in describing how to attend to the breath, how to hold the breath in our awareness so that we don't get lost in thought or get too tight. He uses the analogy of holding a bird, holding a small bird. And again, you know, he says, what happens if you hold that bird too tightly? And we crush it. It's not going to be able to breathe. What happens if you don't hold the bird firmly enough? It just flies away. So there's a quality of firm, steady commitment in the heart. I'm going to hold this bird. I'm going to be right here, but I'm not going to crush it. I'm not going to be too tight, too hard, but not too loose either. Because if I relax it, loosen it, you know, kind of collapse too much in my intention, it runs away. So let's do some practice together, exploring this quality of resolve and uh, how to hold not just the breath, but our mind and our heart, our, our own being. So if you're not already, I invite you to find a comfortable posture, one where your, your body and spine can be relatively upright and long. So that could be sitting, could be standing, could even be reclining, and you still just align, align the spine. And then go ahead and do whatever helps you to shift gears. You know, roll your shoulders or your neck. Maybe take a few slow, deep breaths. <clears throat> Just that sense of kind of settling in, like nesting. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get comfortable here. We're finding that unique balance in the body between a sense of relaxation and ease, but also alertness and energy. If there's any tension or tightness that you notice in your face, say around your eyes or your jaw, just seeing if you can gently soften and relax those areas. And allowing that relaxation to flow down your throat and neck. Letting the throat be open, the neck long. Feeling the shoulders and shoulder blades relax. Settling down through the arms into the elbows, imagining that the elbows had a little bit of extra weight to them so the shoulders can settle down even more. Feeling your forearms, your wrists and hands, the gentle weight and heaviness of your hands. Continuing to scan your attention lightly through your torso, upper and middle torso, the abdomen, the sides of the body, the back. Just softening, releasing any tension that can be released. Letting your awareness pass through your pelvis and hips, down through the legs, into the knees and the lower legs, all the way down into the feet. And feeling the body resting on the earth. Notice the places where your body touches the ground. Contact with the seat, 
perhaps your feet on the floor. Letting your mind sink in to the steady support of the earth. attention settle down into the body. And see if you can allow the spine to extend to its natural length, as if the space between each vertebra could expand ever so slightly like someone were gently pulling a string from the crown of your head that ran all the way through the spine, lengthening upwards, extending. And as we sit here, making a firm resolve in your heart for these next 20 minutes or so, going to put everything else that comes up aside, plans, conversations, memories, thoughts, emotions, concerns, fantasies, worries, and just going to give my heart's full attention to feeling and sensing the rhythm of the breath or if you're using another anchor to being present with that anchor. So go ahead and make that resolve right now. Everything else can wait till later. For right now, I'm just gonna be here. Not too tight, not too loose. And then as we sit, begin to become aware of your anchor. I'll refer to the breath, but you might be using a different anchor like sounds or touch points in the body. So you adjust the guidance I'm offering as you need. Letting the breath come to you body's breathing already all by itself. And letting it come into focus slowly on its own. As you breathe in, see if you can feel the sensations of breathing in. And as you breathe out, feeling, sensing the sensations of breathing out. Letting everything else in your mind and body be exactly as it is. You don't need to fix anything, figure it out or make it go away. The confusion, the worry, the uncertainty. Just letting it all be here, the whole mess.
It's just the landscape, the backdrop. And you're taking a particular interest, giving more attention to this steady rhythmic experience of life energy coming in and out of the body. Remember, it's natural for the mind to wander, to forget. It's the moment of noticing, of remembering, that's the key. So in that moment, when awareness returns, you're already back. You're already here in the present moment. See if there can be a kind of gentle smile of appreciation. Hey, all right. We remembered. Mindfulness is working. It brought us back. And then allowing your attention to return to the breath or whatever anchor you're using. So we make contact with the breath. There's a moment of connection. We feel the beginning of an in-breath. Connecting. And then seeing if you can sustain your attention. Making a commitment with a firm, steady yet flexible heart. Just receiving the whole in-breath. And then at a certain point, it reaches a fullness, connecting with that moment. It shifts and turns to an out-breath, committing, bringing a steady, firm, yet flexible attention. As the out-breath descends and fades,
We're not thinking about the breath. We're experiencing it right here and now, fully alive, fully awake. How do you know that you're breathing? Not intellectually, viscerally, tactile. Feeling it from the inside. Holding it in your awareness like that bird. Kind of responsive, firm, holding. If something else pressing comes up in your experience, a strong emotion, a sensation, some pain, some joy or delight, as you know, it's fine to let go of the anchor and then give your heart's full attention to that experience using some of the tools that Caroline shared last week, recognizing what's happening, accepting, allowing it, coming close with interest, looking more deeply and not getting caught up, not identifying with it, allowing it to unfold in awareness. So whether you're staying with the breath, or being with another strong experience that naturally calls your attention in your mind or body, bringing this firm, responsive commitment, just what's happening here and now, one moment at a time.
whatever comes, whatever arises, can be known and held in awareness with balance, with clarity, and with love. So this is our practice, one moment at a time, learning from this life as it unfolds. last minute or so of our practice together, I invite you to step back a little bit and just reflect on the meditation. What was learned? Is there any shifts in your perspective or understanding? Something that you want to take note of and remember? And if there is, see if you can ground that in your own felt understanding. Less of an idea, but more how it actually occurs to you on the level of your own experience. allowing your eyes to open gently in your own time, bringing your attention back to the room where you are, maybe looking around, introducing some movement to the body. Thank you so much for your practice. Hope you have a good day and uh, see you back here tomorrow.